Hey, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Amanda. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. And for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Okay, so my name is Amanda Sterner, and I'm, uh, I was going to say Office Apps, but it's not call it. It's M365 Apps and Services MVP, and I do mostly Microsoft Teams, but you mean it's part of the whole M365 ecosystem. So I do usually say to my friends and family customers, everything besides coding. I like to try a little bit of everything and uh, yeah, a mix. And I'm from Stockholm, Sweden. So a few hours away from Christian. Yeah, a few hours. I, I, I love <laughs> Stockholm. And as I so one of my kids is fluent in Swedish. So every once in a oh. while, I'll have him say something. Yeah, he lived over there for a couple of years. So oh. um, but he, yeah, he was over in the, see, he didn't get as far south as Malmo. He was started in, uh, now I can't remember the name, but, but he's over on the western side of the country. Um, Maybe like uh, Göteborg? Gothenburg? I, I think so. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and he, he moved around a little bit, but yeah, it's, uh, what I love is that his experience is first, his first apartment over there. And we'd always joke because he was learning the language here, like, uh, well, we need to go hang out at Ikea. And we'd kind of laugh about it. His first apartment, the view out of his window was across the ro- road was an Ikea. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ikea, it's uh, us Swedes were born with it. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Well, it's an institution In here. So, and it's, it's like Costco has their hot dogs. Ikea has their meatballs. And uh, <laughs> we well, just got Costco to to Sweden, so I have to try that. Well, it's you gotta go do the hot 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 dog and soda. I mean, here it's a buck fifty, so it's like you can't beat it for cheap filling lunch. But I have to try it. Yeah. <laughs> well, so so tell me a little bit about uh, you. So you focused on teams, kind of what what's your yep. role? What's your day job? My day job is, like I said, I mean, I I get. Uh, I get bored if I have like one specific role. So I tend to do all different kinds of pieces. So if my current project I'm doing uh, like training, uh, uh, ambassadors program, but I'm also right now working with how you should work with apps in M365, like how you should order them and like the governance parts. And and so I, I want to do a little bit of everything that uh, hey i'm the same way as uh, the, there's a benefit of you know, you know when you ask somebody about you know m365 apps and services mvps we are striped across all of those areas and so you can have somebody who might be an outlook or a powerpoint mvp or a sharepoint mvp and you have others that like i'm a collaboration technology expert like yeah. that's my background for most of my career and that stripes across several different products several different workloads uh, yeah not- just having a some having a platform that can make your day-to-day job and life easier and and like what one million different kind of ways it can it can help you and i like that yep i love that too well so uh, what was your path to becoming an mvp my path to become an mvp started uh, when i started working a few years ago and i had a my my boss, he was an MVP, and I thought he was amazing. He was so inspiring. He was that kind of person, and still is. We but we haven't been working with each other for a couple of years. Super talented. He it felt like he knew everything, but he always had time to help, and that really inspired me. People that are that want to help each other, even though that they probably like don't have time because they're like everywhere and doing so many different things. So that inspired me back then, but it felt really hard to come me as a like fresh in my career to a product SharePoint that, I mean, people have been working with it since forever. What was I going to come and and do with that? So I passed that 
uh, post the idea of like uh, starting blogging and, and trying to do those kind of things. And then Microsoft Teams came and I felt perfect. Now I have a fresh new product. Everybody asks, this is fresh as me and uh, let's try blogging because I mean, I like blogging. I like blogging and that's how I started. So I started just a blog for normal people doing normal teams things. Yeah. And yeah, at the moment, I thought there was a lot of blogs and like very good content out there, but it felt like a lot of it was really like IT pro focused and not the ordinary user mm-hmm. doing ordinary user stuff. So that's that's where it started back in like it was like one million years ago, but it was in, hmm. in 2018, I think, or 19. So not, not that long ago. Yeah, we have a pandemic year, so it's, it's kind of like dog years, you know, it's, <laughs> it's much longer. But that's, but that's great. I mean, when I, so I, when I became an MVP uh, back in uh, January of 2012, I mean, one of the things that there were, it was kind of a thing that there were now a handful of us that were non-technical MVPs. Now I've been working in technology my entire career for over 30 years, but always in project management, business analysts, operations management roles, but always in technology organizations. Uh, I have two degrees in marketing and, and never really was in a marketing role, was always in these, these technical roles. Uh, it, but it was, I because I I saw the same gap in content in, in speakers at, at events. Now you see many more of us that are end user and power user focused that are still not IT pro admin focused that are, you know, so a lot of the productivity tips that I write about are things that, Hey, I found something that I use in my own day to day. This is a great thing. Everybody should come and take a look at it. Are there other, like I just, uh, I, I just did this the last couple of weeks, two or three posts on productivity tips. I had somebody reach out and it's like, yeah, that's been out there for a while. I said, well, I know, but I just found it. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, exactly. <laughs> and, and a lot of other people are like, this is great. And resharing it. Same thing. Like we just found it, you know, but then it's my perspective, my, here's the scenarios where I found it, it useful. So that is, that's valid content to have out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I really like that, that. I mean, I learn new things every day, even from my customers as well. Like last week, I learned about this quick mute button in like Teams meeting when oh, you yeah. mute it and you press the control middle. I didn't know about that. I mean, I, I learn new things every day as well. And that's, that's amazing that no one is 100% knowledgeable. We can always learn from each other. Yep. Well, that, and, and there's... A, the other aspects too is that you know there's so much content that's out there the answer is not um hey we need to have less people writing no we need better filters we need better you know we, we but but you look around within the community find trusted voices and there's people who are in your industry that have similar likes and dislikes and things that are out there that you might appreciate their blog post on that same topic that you wrote i might have yeah. written about the same thing so yeah, we need more content and then people need to spend more time kind of filtering through and finding the things that they like and are comfortable with. And yeah. And sometimes when, like when I talk to people and I've had the same feelings that why should I blog when there are so many bloggers, but there's always room for more because everybody has a different voice. And I think there's always room for people putting out content. And I mean, I blog, I don't know, 50-50, but a lot of, a big reason is because I want to remember what I'm doing right? and like writing while I'm testing. And that's I, something I, there, I read an article, uh, that, wow, it, more than 15 years ago. I'm trying to think uh, <laughs> I might've, but it was a Microsoft researcher and he was working with Stanford University. I think he was based out of San Francisco. So somewhere out of the San Francisco Bay Area. It was an older gentleman. He was like in his 70s, I think. And it was, but it was writing about how he was capturing uh, everything that he did and storing, I mean, every month, petabytes of information. He had cameras. It was 
capturing like physical documents that he's working on as well as everything digital. And it was, he was studying like the human brain and how much you retain and, and, and lose. And I just was inspired by that, that article and being in the collaboration technology space and, and information management and capturing all this information um, and kind of the early days of some of the machine learning and AI capabilities yeah. with the, with the web. So this is early two thousands and I started, um, you know, so I started my blog in 2004, this one, I think in February of 2004, and it was exactly what you described. It was more for me just to retain, like, what was I working on? What were my thoughts on those things? Then I started using OneNote, doing it the same way. I'd, I'd blog and capture and share things, but it was much about me working through a problem or working through an idea. Yeah. And then sharing that out there, but then in yeah. capturing everything else. So it's like an extension of my brain. Yeah, but um, it's it's really it's really cool. And and I very often read other people's blog posts and get like inspired, like, oh, I want to try that and I want to like test it my own way. And and it just creativity feeds creativity. Yeah. Well, in, innovation feeds innovation. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it usually like great ideas don't just like spark you're like hey i have nothing and suddenly had this brilliant idea it's usually it's an iterative process that's why i love yeah. collaboration technology you and i might be working on it and what we come up with having worked together will be different than what either one of us might have come yeah. up with on our own yeah that's uh, i usually I, sometimes i say like super super cheesy quotes no no person is an island so yeah. i mean if we work together things become better exactly well for, i'm sure you've had people that have come up to you and, and asked about uh you know like recommendations for if they're interested in becoming an mvp kind of, what's your guidance for somebody that is interested in investigating the program yeah i think like like I said, I started my blog, and in the beginning, I was a really good blogger. Blogged a lot. Now I blog very seldom. I, I need to get uh, like inspiration, and then I write something. But I think starting becoming active in the community, like it, it easily sucks you into a lot of different things. So I started my blog, and I contacted uh, another Swedish MVP who he was the first. Uh, like Teams MVP in Sweden, and I said, "Hey, like, how does this work? Let's let's do fun things." And and mm -hmm. he started to invite me to things, and like my community grew bigger. And just if, when you start doing community activities, you will get sucked into a lot of different things. And if you just come on and uh, and it should be fun. Everything should be fun. So start start doing something that you enjoy uh, for a master of technology. And if you enjoy it, I, it will just it will just follow along. It feels like. So I'm going to remember that in my next conversation with my manager. Be like, you know what? This is not as fun as I thought. <laughs> I'd like to no, not do I, this. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. I. I Actually, I sometimes say that at, at my like at my clients, but uh, not not every, not every time, but sometimes. But I think that's really important for like being an MVP and doing this because it it takes a lot of time and yeah. it should only be fun. I try to try not to do things just because I only do things that I that I enjoy because I mean otherwise I could spend time with my family instead of my like internet. Buddy. <laughs> yeah, but it, it. I mean, look, we, everybody has hobbies, and sometimes they're in in the you know the house. Sometimes they're out of the house. Um, but it should be things that you enjoy doing, and and yeah. so I, mean, I just had this conversation yesterday with somebody talking this exact same thing. It's it's like I like I blogging is a hobby for me, and creating videos. I do AMAs. I you know that that kind of stuff is just it's what I enjoy doing. If if my we're empty nesters, if my wife is is gone and it's just me and the dog here and on a Saturday and I'm I'm like you know, what I'm gonna do for the next couple hours and I'm I think about technology and I'm reading up on things and write jotting down my thoughts about things. 
it's become, it's my hobby to go and yeah. do those things on the community side. Because like, it's like so most MVPs of like, I, I'm not doing it during working hours. It's well, actually I am recording this during work hours right now, but besides <laughs> this, <laughs> but it's so hard. It's so hard to like explain to friends that like, don't work with tech at all. Like I, I, I run a conference with a couple of community bodies, uh, about Microsoft teams, of course. Mm. And, and, and they're like, yeah, so it's for work. I'm like, no, it's, uh, it's what I work with, but it's not for work. It's on my free time, but I work with the same thing. And they had like a really hard time to understand, like, so why are you putting a lot of time into, it's not your work, but you work with it, but you find it fun. Like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that, again, that's kind of the profile of, of MVPs. It's that I, there's a, I also describe it as like, uh, I, for many years was a runner and is that runner's high and you get a very similar experience that runner's high off of helping other people solve problems, directing them to useful technology, putting together same thing, organized many events and getting ready. We're starting our planning for our, uh, collab days event in February again. So the planning is underway. Um, yeah, so uh, the, always a lot to to do, a lot of opportunity that's out there, and you need to find people who are you need to be passionate about, you know, one or more technology areas to kind of do this. But it is fun. I mean, it is really fun. I met so many great people and people that like share share the same interests that I don't share with other friends, and it's. Uh, it's nice. It's nice to getting to know people online. And then like the first time you meet face to face, it's like, wow, is this you? There's a, yeah, there's a lot of people where you, you look at their Twitter profile and you'd be like, did we, have we met or something? No, I've just seen your face on your Twitter profile for years. <laughs> and we finally meet in person. I just had that experience in June, people that I felt like I knew I was over in the UK in June. And no, it was these, some of these people, it was the first time I'd ever seen them in person. But it's super weird. It's super weird. And like some people, some people you have on Twitter and it feels like you interact a lot, but maybe, maybe I'm just reading their posts and liking and they have no idea who I am. So it's just, it's, uh, it's really weird, but it's nice. People yeah, are friendly. Always- it's always nice putting a, an actual face um, behind a stalker on, uh, you know, on social. <laughs> but well, Amanda, really appreciate your time and, and getting to know you for these few minutes. But uh, for folks that want to get in touch and find you, what are the best ways to reach you? I think the best ways to reach me is Twitter, maybe not LinkedIn, but I am at LinkedIn I, and I post there sometimes and my blog. So and we'll have the links, of course, to your blog and, and those resources out on the uh, blog posted on the YouTube description as well. And hopefully, uh, are you at uh, ESPC next month or end yeah. of this month? Yeah, well, then I'll see you there. That will be my, my like first real session uh, post-pandemic. So that would be exciting. Me and Carolina Ketke, my Finnish lovely MVP friend, we're doing a session together. So that would be really fun. That's exciting. Well, I'll see you there. I'll be there. And I'm part of the uh, community reporters as well. So I think I'll be in the expo hall and the community reporter booth much of the week, but uh, I will, I'll see you out there. Oh, then see you in Copenhagen in a couple of weeks. <laughs>